What's up everybody? Today I'm really excited to show you a project that I've been looking forward to trying out in a while. I will show you how to turn one of these Ishin VR 006 cheap FPV goggles into a dedicated portable spectator screen that you can fit in your pocket. One of these is about $35 on Banggood and AliExpress and whatever, and compared to the dedicated screens that can be anywhere from $70 to over $100, it made sense and I just wanted to play around and make something cool. The reason you might want to do this or buy a dedicated FPV screen is when you're out in the field, it's a very solitary thing. One person can put them on, everybody else can't see what they see. So with a screen, a bunch of people can huddle around it, watch it, discuss it, get excited. And that's what I wanted and I wanted it cheap. For this project, you will need soldering and you'll need 3D printing. So make sure you have the resources and if you would rather read than watch and follow along with the video, I will post a text and photos only version in the description, along with all the 3D models that you can print yourself. So go check it out. Let's go. Taking this apart is really straightforward. Underneath, there are four screws. Here, you need to remove the retainer for the antenna mount. And the two parts simply come apart. It's not attached in any way. Inside we have the buttons, the board for the buttons, there's the Fresnel lens. You can take that and use it for other projects if you want. And here's the board. Uh, you gotta be careful retrieving the board. First thing, we're going to remove the battery and it just has this piece of foam wedged in. Here it's glued to the side of the wall. Now you want to carefully pry it open, don't pull it by the battery, don't pull by the cable, you'll just rip it out, you risk shorting it. Take a knife and cut it, that's what I already did, so mine just comes off. And now you want to pull these two together very carefully because the screen is attached with the ribbon cable and that's a very fragile part. You don't want to damage it. If you damage that, that's it. You need to get a replacement screen. So the receiver board is actually quite loose, but the screen is quite tightly wedged in this plastic. So I'm going to slowly remove both. And there we go. Let's overview the board a little bit. The screen is not attached. That's why you got to be very careful about the flex cable. On the back we have the receiver module, one antenna. This board comes in two variants, this one and one with two antennas. That's fake diversity. I didn't want the extra antenna and a bit sticking out, so I picked this one. We've got the audio jack. It has nice little breakouts for audio, AV, VBAT and ground if you wanted to mod it with a DVR. I'm not going to do that here. The charging port for the battery. It doesn't actually say what the battery is, but it's a single cell 3.7 volt. Um, I might use this for now. I might replace it with something with uh, better capacity. We'll see. And the control board. Also detachable. I'll turn this on holding the power button. Once the LED is solid, it turns on. I'll plug a quad in to show you what the video quality is like. The video looks really crisp on the screen. I really like it. It's a three inch LCD display, uh, very portable. You can see how it's going to fit in the pocket really nicely. Before attaching the display, I want to cover up all of these contacts. The back of the screen is metal, and I don't want it to short out any of the ground and voltage breakouts. Using double sticky tape is a good way to make sure it doesn't move around, but isn't attached so hard that it will get damaged if I need to take it off. So I'll just align it. Press lightly. Next, you're going to remove this metal shield because when we slot this assembly into the 3D print, the ridges of the 3D print will get caught and you have a chance of damaging the LCD screen itself. So uh, it's not 
really serving any purpose anymore in terms of protection so just gonna remove it after all these prototypes and failed prints I've settled on a design uh, and I'll show you how this works initially I tried to make a design that sort of has tabs and clicks together I didn't want to make anything that required screws or extra tools so eventually I decided this is the simplest solution and we're gonna put it together now remember we want to be very careful about this ribbon cable just put that in in a way that bends the cable uh, out this way and essentially everything just sort of clicks into place took me a few tries to get the measurements right but essentially this is what we get After we reattach all the parts, it will essentially just close up like this and you'll be able to attach your antenna and this will be the complete screen. Actually, what I want to show you is that going, uh, this is implying that you're going to use the original stock battery and I accidentally during development just sort of damaged it so I had to reattach it to a new cable. but. The battery is just going to sit here, uh, and you can secure it with double sticky tape or something. And the control board is going to sit over there, hence the holes. Now, I didn't want to print an extra part or have any kind of special buttons or anything like that. Um, so essentially, I'm just using the buttons that are there to change channels and change the settings, but as you can see, that connector is getting in the way. It's too thick. So the last step, actually, we're going to remove this connector and reattach the cables, just solder them onto the board, and then double sticky tape that on the inside. And we should be good to go. Make sure to note which cable goes where. They're both black, so it's hard to tell. I'm just going to put tape over the one that goes on top. And that way there won't be any confusion about the cables later on. Now the easiest way to do this is if you have a heat gun to just heat it up, detach the part, but I don't have that so I'm gonna carefully break away the plastic and then disorder the pins that are left over. And it doesn't matter if I lift the pads because I can just scratch off the surface, it's pretty self-explanatory. These are not like super tiny or anything. So be careful but don't worry if you mess it up. There we go, and then just get rid of those. Check that you didn't bridge the pads. I'm going to cut this connector off. Expose the wires. And just remember the one that went on top and the one that goes on the bottom. They're pretty close together. Now this part is down. Uh, let's test that everything still works. Yep, works fine. Now let's just assemble everything and that will be it. So just like before, I'm going to slot it in. Goes in pretty easy. The battery will be located here. And the control board will be located here. So, let's secure the battery.
It's also a good idea to put a piece of foam here uh, so that the control board is padded so when you're pressing the buttons it doesn't eventually over time just go through. So I'm gonna do just that. I have some spare packing foam that's quite rigid and firm. I'm gonna take a piece of that and slice that off and put it down there. There we go. This should provide enough padding for the control board to not sag through the holes. Unfortunately, I, I can't slide it from the side like this. Um, but if you align the holes on the rails, you're able to push this in. And now you can fully slide the back on. Everything fits into place. And there we go. The screen assembly is complete. I made some holes so that you can see the LED status. Also, if you're charging the battery, you'll be able to see the LED on the bottom. Let's test this out with a quad. There we go. Um, yeah, this is a nice little pocket spectator screen. I hope you enjoyed this build. If you would like to participate and contribute to the project, make improvements, feel free to submit a pull request on the GitHub page for the project. And if you build one following this guide, please tag me in the photo on Instagram. I would love to see it. If you'd like to see more of these kind of hardware and hobby related projects, consider supporting me by subscribing to this channel and check out my other hobbies, game development uh, and drone flying on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching and happy building.